One of the things that I've discovered about my shop is that it's not giant. <laughs> and uh, I have any number of projects going on all at the same time, from uh, paddle builds to I'm doing some lighting work, that sort of thing. And having a tripod just anywhere in the shop and uh, lighting and that sort of thing, it, it's really cumbersome and it gets in the way. And in truth, I was worried about a uh, uh, tripod the other day and left a saw running. And I, I never do that. So I decided to fix it. And how I decided to fix it was um, I look at people that are smarter than me. Um, online and see what they did. <laughs> so there's uh, a couple of folks like um, like Frank from Frank Makes uh, here on YouTube. He did a um, uh, a camera mount on his ceiling in his shop that actually has a a wooden cog and he can do like 360 degree shots on. And there's there's a few other people. I'll put some links down down in the description of some some really nice camera mounts uh, that are on the ceiling. And I decided to do it as well. Um, and I had my own take on it because I've got kind of an expanse up top where I can really, really put a whole track in. And uh, let, let me show you what my solution was. You, you may know from the either Instagram or the YouTube fee, feed, I do a bunch of paddles. And I'm always needing to hang them somewhere. So I did that and it got me thinking, well, it'll make a perfect track for for a camera mount. So I had some more Unistrut and I went ahead and I installed um, Unistrut here and it's out of the way of the light. It doesn't won't cast a shadow on the light and it's out of the way of my attic door here in the shop. So these trolleys are actually made for Unistrut and they do a phenomenal job. I mean look at that. Look how easy they 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 move. I think they'll hold like uh, 1,500 pounds each. I mean, something crazy. So at some point, I realized I mounted the track wrong for trolleys, and so I had to buy these parts from Big Master Car, pull everything down, and start all over again. I have pulled them down, and I have started the remount process with the correct hardware. I would also suggest that you check your lag bolts ahead of time to make sure that some comedian has not put 12 millimeter in with the half inch. It will save you a lot of cussing and hateful dirty words while standing on the top of a ladder military pressing a 30 pound piece of unistrut into the air. Okay, one hour and more than a couple of dirty words later, I think. We have success. And then I put stops at the end to keep me from shooting it all the way over. <laughs> So these are my notes and my doodles uh, on the Dolly project and it looks like I started uh, 8.15, um, had some notes and some additions basically uh, putting these trolley hangers in and redoing this. In September um, I made some other notes and some changes in December and finished the, uh, the drawings I guess on the computer and then didn't actually get it almost completely done in March but didn't finish it until April of 2020 so almost a year because I used the free version of easel I did the original design in AutoCAD and then transported it over via uh, DXF into easel because of the compound curves for the cut all right I have my initial cutout done I need to flip it over and then take it off of this and additionally, um, I'm going to use the width of these to precisely set my fence so that uh, I can do the other two arms that are going to go on this. So let's get that started. Anytime you use a wood CNC uh, and it cuts out various shapes, it leaves these little tabs. And that's to keep it from, from cutting free and have your piece move all over the place and either screw up the blade or screw up the piece. And there's... Everybody has their own way of doing it. I know guys that use little Japanese saws, one of the little trim saws. 
and we'll cut these and some people hit them with a chisel um i actually use this uh this thing is is amazing it's like super quick super easy i can get into the round shapes i can plunge it if i need to go a little deeper um yeah that's that's how i do it all cut out side note i end up over the years have had a lot of these rounds and i keep them and what i end up doing is using them for rollers or gluing them together um to make other stuff with so i actually have a whole whole tub and just full of these rounds of different sizes now the little ones here i don't keep but the, anything bigger than an inch and a half i'll keep Depending on the project, I actually clean the holes up and the edges with either the 16th inch roundover or the 8th inch or even sometimes a quarter inch roundover. Just a quick and, quick and easy spin around this and we're done. Just like so. Nice and eased. Not blood, paint. All my bits are cut out and together. Go ahead and assemble this bad boy. So the initial section of the camera dolly uh, looks kind of like a rocket, and that's on purpose. Because <laughs> I, I engineered on rockets and airplanes, um, and I like the whole aesthetic. Uh, so it's all together here. Um, and let's talk about this real quick. I put a half inch hole right in the center, and when I did the design, I mirrored it. Uh, so I could cut two exactly out the same. And somehow in the translation, um, as you can see here is my center line. And, oh, oh, what's that? What? My half inch hole for the bolt didn't get popped center. Not only not center in the middle, but not center of this three inch uh, circle. So, or 1.5 inch uh, radius circle, uh, where it should be. So I went ahead and plugged it with a pine dowel and glued it up. And I'm going to let that sit uh, and then I'm gonna re-drill it uh, after I cut it and trim it I'm gonna re-drill it from this side so that I have a solid shaft uh, it's a bearing on for the solid shaft so I mean I could have enlarged the hole a little bit and it probably would have been fine especially as large as this is I don't think that it would be wobbly or wonky wonky is a technical term but it just it just bugs me to go through all of this detail um and then have that out of center so again glued i'm going to cut it and redrill it i'm going to throw on a couple coats of uh of clear just just because uh one of the things that i ran out of battery for was I put uh, this piece of metric all thread into the back of this. Now the reason I use metric is because I already had it. <laughs> it was just spare. Now the pivot is here and that's not quite in the center. Of course it's offset and I, uh, I measured the weight of that plus the weight of the, the camera and all that over here uh, and then added an extra pound and figured that my center of gravity was right there and then for giggles I moved it back about an inch and a quarter as well so that way if I do need to counterbalance it um, I can add a little weight back there first coat is on and done I've literally had this lazy Susan um, piece for like 12 years and it was going to originally go in the kitchen cabinets here at the house, but we, we changed the design a little bit and didn't end up using this one you, you, and used something else. So she's been sitting here waiting, waiting. Today, today is its day. Got all the parts and hardware staged. I'm going to go ahead and install it on the Unistrut and try real hard not to fall off a ladder and hurt myself. If nothing else, this verifies the strength of my X-Carve table build because my big fat ass is standing in the middle of it, not even moving a bit.
there we go. Fully in place. Now, again, I haven't waited um, so that it supports the camera. If I put any other crap on here, I'll put some more weight <laughs> to keep it to keep it in balance. But if I want to do a down shot, then we can do a down shot. <clears throat> And it rotates all the way around. So that way I can get shots over the table saw. I can bring it over here and get shots over the X card. the lathe or I can take it all the way over to the other side of the shop and get the machine shop side or if I'm working on the Jeep or something like that I am super stoked at my camera dolly the GoPro mounts up nicely here as does the little session either here and then tilted or even on the side here for like uh, to film down for like some time-lapse shots on the uh, the saw or the CNC It doesn't hurt that I have like four of these little GoPro sessions um, And they're just really handy just to kind of have around when I want to get a quick shot of something This is in no way an endorsement for GoPro uh, No, no, I am a stockholder little bitty tiny tiny amount of stock and uh, it has performed absolutely terribly and cost me tons of money so not telling you that it's the most awesome product in the world because while they're cool cameras, the companies run like shit. It's even a nice solid platform for when I pull out the phone, I do a little filming with the phone because either I've wasted all my battery or that's the only thing I have in my pocket. Thanks, I appreciate you watching. Please do me a favor and go down and subscribe.